Democracy Civil Rights for All banner will be going up on Main Street uh, on Sunday the 2nd of September for Labor Day. And I always invite people to come and uh, show their support for democracy and civil rights and to exercise their, their strength in coming out to stand up for democracy. Second announcement, the, uh, I have uh, organized a rally for Labor Day, the 3rd, which is a Monday, at uh, 5.30 p.m. in Pliny Park. And uh, we hope for some political speeches and uh, some songs for the peaceful revolution. Also on September 12th at the Brattleboro Democracy Forum, Nick Biddle and Tim Kipp will co-present on the topic of fascism. Is it here? How do we recognize it? And what are the consequences? And what should we do about it? It will be a brief presentation followed by a group discussion. On the 26th, Martin Corbin, local Brattleboro musician and mainstay of the Brattleboro music scene, will be singing for democracy at the Democracy Forum. So with that, I'd like to welcome Rio. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Rio Dimes. I'm 16 and I live here in Battleboro. I'm a youth boat coordinator. Um, the youth boat is an amendment that will allow 16 and 17 year olds in Brattleboro to vote on local issues, to serve on the school board for the Town, which is the elementary schools, and um, for the high school, Battle Road Union High School. And also, um, it allows 16, 17 year olds to serve on the representative town meeting in Brattle Road. Um, it allows, um, I believe, one youth member on the representative town meeting and two youth members on each school board so they can serve simultaneously on each school board. Um, so we came across a problem in the petition about the, the, um, the school boards and we thought that it might not be able to go on the BOHS school board because um, we would have um, more, we would have to bring more towns uh, into the youth vote because um, kids um, from five surrounding towns of Brattleboro also go to BUHS and we thought that would give um, more represent representation to Brattleboro. But we, um, we discovered that it actually doesn't do that, it just gives Brattleboro a wider um, range of people to choose from to go on the school board um, from Brattleboro. But um, I think that that might be a good opener and a good idea to maybe expand to those five towns in the future and maybe to the whole state and then possibly to the national level sometime. Um, Sorry, I have a lot of questions at this point. I have a question regarding that, 
I guess we can have discussion throughout if that's fine. Yeah, I just want to, yeah, I'm just wondering that, so there is a certain amount of people that can serve on the school board, and one of them could be a youth, but it's not necessary, it's not that there's a specific space for the youth. Correct. Okay. So the youth have to go through the same process as any other person to get on the representative town meeting or the school board, they have to run. And it's not a reserved seat for 16, 17 year olds specifically. Oh. It's for anyone, but they can be voted on to that just like anyone else can. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought it was a specific slot for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, <laughs> I believe that the youth vote should be a thing uh, be passed because 16-year-olds um, at the age of 16 you are granted a lot of rights that are seen as adult as adult rights and the things that adults do um, such as um, have a job, get your license, pay taxes with your um, income, um, get a tattoo, get married, um, have a sexual relationship, get a GED, um, also get an abortion or a, an emancipation. So I think that since since um, 16 year olds can do all those things that 18 year olds can do, especially emancipation, which would leave them literally being an, being an adult on their own. Yes. Not to mention the things that happen in our town and in our school directly affect us, so we should be able to have a say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that if the youth are allowed to make all those life-changing decisions um, at age 16, um, it is, I think we should be given the right to make small inputs to political choices in the government. Um, and also at age 16, um, people have more stable living conditions than at age 18. Um, they have most likely been living in the town that they're um, currently in for a longer amount of time. Um, they're living with their parents who are also probably voters, um, they know their town better, but at age 18, a lot of people have just moved out and are just going to college for the first time and don't really know the town that they're in, um, don't really know the people that they're around, um, and they don't feel as connected with making decisions that directly will might affect them, um, so they don't register to vote and they don't go out to vote because they're surrounded by a bunch of other people who are in the exact same stage of life that they are in, like in college dorms maybe. Um, and so we think that since 16 year olds are more secure, they should, we should be given the vote young and started young and maybe we can have that, um, that habit for the rest of our lives and bring up the voting, the man voters um, in where we live. Um, and also, no taxation without representation, which is, I think, a little, probably the biggest point that we've been thinking about because um, most of the people my age that I know actually have a job or have had a job and um, and those their incomes are taxed and those taxes go into things that people vote on and affect them very directly and I think that since we pay those taxes we should make a decision on how those taxes are used in our town.
So some people say might say I have I came across this a lot of times while collecting signatures um, to put it on the ballot that youth aren't educated enough. Um, I think a lot of people might be saying that um, because they're looking back on how where they were at this age, and I think it has changed a lot over time. And now there are a lot of youth who are very politically active um, and who work on all these things all the time and who educate themselves just so that they can go out and maybe speak at rallies or have intelligent discussions with people and be aware of all that's going on around them. Did you have something to say? No, I, the only thing that that I was thinking, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not really that political, but a sort of electoral college for the, for the young people that kind of makes it such that it's an average and, and it does count rather than the whole thing. I know, I'm not I, sure I, I understand just, no, I mean we, we you all count, but even 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 the, the college students really that that electoral college thing is really not the truth of the matter. With it's eighteen a, year olds going to college? Yeah. Um, that's a different term, I think. Electoral oh, the electoral college. college. Electoral right, but that doesn't have to do with students in college, correct? That doesn't have, that's, yeah. that's not really referring to college students. And this is all on like a local level. So like if this passed, it would change like the cha town charter. So like, like local, like Broadway kids could vote on like exclusively mm -hmm. issues. Um, yeah, right, they wouldn't be able to vote for governor. They would be able to vote on town okay. issues. Okay. And so the whole electoral college conversation wouldn't even refer okay. to this issue. Okay, that's okay, yeah. Yeah, I think it would, might prepare 16-year-olds um, if they start voting on a local local level, and it will prepare them um, to vote on a on national level or a statewide level. And at that age, they would be able to vote for governor. Yes. yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. That, that so this is like laws. a precursor. Right. To town right. and then to state level. Right. So it, I, it's like preparing them to be um, good citizens of you know, responsible voters. So that's only voters. fair. That's yeah. only right. Yeah. <coughs> um, so we have been working to gather signatures. Um, we actually did a big push this past five days um, on the signature gathering. Um, now I will tell you about the whole problem that came up with the um, town government recently that brought us to this point that we're at. Um, so back in 2015, um, the youth vote was um, worked on by Brattleboro Common Sense. Um, then and sadly didn't pass it now on the ballot and um, it, the vote was very close but it didn't pass um, and there was the town attorney um, thought of a complaint against the uh, petition um, that was resolved and ended up being okay and he dropped what he said and said, okay, this is fine, actually, we can put it on the ballot. And then last Thursday, we turned in a big bunch of our petitions to be checked for the signatures. And um, the town attorney um, didn't remember that he had made that complaint once before and made the complaint again. And, um, <laughs> And he thought that, um, and then when he was reminded that he had made that complaint once before, he, he 
thought that it didn't get on the ballot last time when it actually had. And so we were brought to this point that we needed to um, have a meeting, have a scheduled meeting um, with the select board during one of their meeting dates to um, kind of resolve the issue again and make sure that it was okay to put on the ballot and see what they say about it because usually for a petition that's going on a ballot you don't need to have a scheduled time during a, during a um, select board meeting um, but it does go in front of the select board and the select board will say okay all the signatures are here let's put on the ballot and then they send it up to go to the ballot and then the ballot is, goes through um, but if there's a problem, we have to go in front of the select board during a scheduled meeting time. Um, so we were to told last Thursday, the 16th, that we had to have a scheduled meeting with the select board. And um, we knew that, so this is a little bit of a complicated thing that happened this past week. We knew that the, um, that the deadline to get all the signatures in, to get it on the November ballot, which is what we were planning, was Friday the 24th, this upcoming Friday in two days. And um, we had just collected a lot of signatures at the um, primary elections. And we were like, okay, good, we're on track. Um, and then when we learned that we had to get on the select board um, agenda. We were told that the deadline to get all the signatures in um, for the select board meeting was that same day, two hours later. So, and we still had 150 more signatures to collect. So we were told um, we could either get it on the agenda for the um, Tuesday, the 21st, yesterday's meeting for the select board, or we could um, wait and get it on the agenda for the next select board meeting, which is after the deadline to get the youth vote on the November elections. So, so um, uh, we were kind of disappointed we knew that we couldn't get the rest of the signatures in two hours. Um, and then we were called back and told that it was actually okay, we could still be on the agenda for the select board meeting if we got the signatures in the, the day before the select board meeting. So we were like, okay, yes, we can do this by Monday. Um, get the rest of the signatures, can work hard um, collecting them. And um, we, we were relieved because we knew we could do that. But then we were called back again and told that we actually couldn't get all the signatures in on the Monday. And um, we, there was no chance of getting on the November ballot after all. So we took that and we were disappointed for a little bit and we thought that we, there was no chance of getting on the November ballot. But then we realized, okay, but if we just really try, get all the signatures by Monday, um, go in front of the select board um, during the um, public participation time of the meeting and say, we have all the signatures in, we, um, we have been pushed, we have been pushed around by the town government, um, and on, a, it, on an issue that has already happened and already been resolved, and this is the reason why we have to come in front of you at all, and we, this is not fair for you to um, postpone this until March, which would be the next time to be able to get it on the ballot. Um, so we got all the signatures by Monday, and we turned them all in to the town clerk, and um, she verified them all, and yesterday um, we went in front of the select board. I, I spoke at the select board, and um, I told them the story about the town attorney and how he had brought up the same 
issue that was not actually an issue from last time and had forgotten and then we had had the deadline change on us three times in a row and then we were confused and we didn't know if there was a chance or not and I said we said that either you just put it on the ballot and not pass judgment on it because that's not your job it's the state legislature's job or you schedule another meeting please for <laughs> for a few days from now which we know you can do because um, it's legal for them to send out a warning saying that they can schedule another meeting within um, if they have 24 hours notice so we said please do that and um, we were told um, for a minute for a few minutes we were kind of, I was kind of disappointed because it looked like um, it wouldn't happen because one of the select board members was saying, oh, this is how we do it. You would just have to go on September 5th, which is our next select board meeting. We can put you on the agenda and we can get you on the ballot in, in March and it won't be a problem. You can just do it then. And I said, well, we've been planning on November this whole time and the whole reason that we're not getting on it right now is because of an of someone at the town attorney forgetting that he had made the same complaint once before. And then um, they, um, one of the select board meetings uh, members, um, Scholes, said, how about we schedule a meeting for Friday morning and we can um, check it over and then maybe put it on the ballot. And then three of them said that they were available, which is the majority, which is fine, um, to put it, to have a meeting about it. And they scheduled time, so that was a really big relief because it means that we have a big chance um, to get it on the November ballot. Um, and then. That sounds I mean, really stressful. Yeah, it was. It, I was pretty stressed out speaking in front of the select board, and I wasn't sure um, how it was going to end. And then um, they said they were going to have that meeting, and it probably means that it's going to be okay because it's just to put it on the ballot. It's not actually approving it or not. And then a man stood up and <laughs> he said, "Oh." 16 year olds, they have never had a job, they don't stand on their own two feet on their own, you know, they, they don't deserve to have a vote, and they, they're just stupid, they don't know things, and then um, the select board and my coworker Mark stood up and said, well, this is just to put it on the ballot, this isn't actually passing any, like, this isn't supposed to be opinionated, this is not in approval of it or anything this is just putting it on the ballot and then they said okay we'll have that meeting so there's a meeting coming up um select board meeting two days from now um at 9 30 a.m on friday the 24th um it's at the municipal building um in the select board meeting room it's public and if you want to come um and put in a few good words for the youth vote and say that we deserve to get on the ballot in November. That would be amazing. And I am really surprised that we actually got that meeting at all because it looked like for a while that they were just going to go ahead with, with shaking us around and not really giving us good thought or, or consideration, but they did. Can I ask you if that's kind of a special meeting? Well, they have to warn that in the paper. Um, I'm not sure about the paper, but they, they just voluntarily maybe do it. But do they have to do it? They have to warn it, but they they um, I'm not sure about in the paper. Okay, it's not. It's 9:30. Yes, 9:30 a.m. And fr this Friday. Yes. Good girl. <laughs> I just like to say it's interesting that you that you pointed out this um, uh, 
community member that spoke against the vote at the end of this discussion at the meeting last evening and how you said this isn't really a time for opinions, this is really about the process. It's really about just getting the, the issue on going through the demo and this being the democracy forum, it's like <laughs> this is a democratic process in action. And um, I think that's really important that you brought it back to that in that moment. Um, because it's not really voting on the issue itself. It's yeah, putting it exactly. it's getting it there in front of the people so the people can decide and that's the process. It was no big Hullabaloo and some, I don't know if he was 13 years old who ran for governor. I don't remember yeah. somebody getting up and saying, wow, no, no, no. Well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank God he didn't win. To, 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 to be honest, uh, may I think of things a little different. Mm -hmm. But the, the law, law part of this, the, the, the person who had a problem twice, I believe that's just trying to help you, and in the end, you'll win. You'll you'll get past it. Oh, the challenge. I think it's a, it, it, it's 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 just it's it, it's a it's kind of a way you know you're you're pliable with the town, the whole political process has to mold a person to 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 know that you're part that you're part of it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like being a carpenter or any other. You, you got to know what you're doing. And I think they know that you do. <laughs> really. It says Obviously, your your goals are there. Uh -huh. they, they show up. You break, they break, something breaks down. It gets better again. And it just, it just, it just works. It sounds though like the problem was solved once and then the problem was present the same problem yeah. was presented to the same person who forgot that he resolved the problem. Yeah, but we all get old. Well, but you don't <laughs> you can't be legal advisor for the town of Brattleboro if you can't think through and remember, or at least admit, oh my gosh, I made a mistake, well, I was wrong, let's proceed. No, uh, the whole thing there, went through Was there paperwork again. twice? Do you have copies of po um, paperwork it, twice? I don't think it was a very technical matter. It was just something he brought up vocally. Like he called me okay. when they were checking the petitions it. and said, oh, I have this, um, I'm worried about this because it, there might be something legally wrong with this, and then he had remember he had forgotten that it happened once before. And I don't think it. Um, to respond to what you were saying, I'm not sure if they would be able to just say if he would be able to just drop it, and then it would just be able to go on the ballot without going in front of the select board. You mean I think, a second I think, time? I think maybe. Um, the fact that he brought it up at all means that it has to go in front of the select board, even if he like said that he was wrong. It means that there might be a problem, and then it has to go in front of the select board. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not positive, but I think I get the feeling that that might be the case. Yeah, I'd like to know. Can't say that he's wrong because that would be weak. <laughs> I'd like to know how old you are. I'm 16. You are proof. You don't have to say, once you make a presentation, all you have to do is say, and I'm 16. Mm -hmm. uh, and if people want to get up and make the comments like that man did at the meeting, like you don't know anything and you're not aware, and uh, he's got the proof right in front of him that he's yeah. horribly you. mistaken. Uh, just keep your shoulders high. Could I ask you, do you know what the problem was that the town attorney was concerned about? Yes. Um, it was on our petition. It says that it says that um, the 16-year-olds and like anyone else have to take the voters oath before they um, vote, and they have to take the voters oath and be a registered voter. Um, just like anyone else, um, and he made the complaint that 
that <laughs> the vote is open it's only for 18 and up. Like it says, apparently, you said that it was in the Constitution that the voters vote is for only 18 and up, 18 year olds and above. Um, and that it might be a problem because it's legally impossible for a 16 year old to get the vote that's for only 18 year olds. Um, I'm not positive um, about that what the Constitution says about the voter self, but I'm sure. But it was resolved last time. It was. It was now. Res it has now been resolved this time. Mm. So I believe that it, is it? it's actually okay. What is it? Um, the voter self. Yeah. Um, it's just saying that. No, I can't. I never took it. Recite. No, I never took a voter's oath. I think you take, take it. When, I mean, you when, take it. You don't have to no. recite it, but you just sign. When so you when you sign, register to vote, no. yes. you're signing an oath. Yes. yes. That's amazing. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, because we were registering the lady when we went out um, canvassing. And she had there's like a little box that said something about like it's a voter's oath. Yeah, the voter's yeah. oath, and you just checked it off. Like when I got my when I got my license. Asks you if you want to register well and in it. Well, so then if you are if you get your license at 16 and you get a voter's vote, I mean you can register to vote when you get your license only if you're 18 or older. They only put it on your license registration if you're 18. Okay, so now that we think that it will go past the select board smoothly, since they made that meeting, I believe that if people are willing to have the time to think about it, that they're going to pass it, I think, hopefully. I'm not going to get too confident. Um, we are going to, in these next few months of coming to November, we're going to try to get a lot of publicity about the youth vote, um, get people to go out and vote when it's actually on the ballot. Um, we have some upcoming events. We're, um, me and my co-coordinator, co James, are going to um, have a little informational event meeting thing at the library um, on the 28th of this month from 5.30 to 7 p.m. I'm not sure um, what room it's going to be in, but I'm sure it'll be posted there. Um, we are also going to be tabling at the co-op on September 8th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m where people walk in and out, um, actually where they walk out <coughs> from the co-op. Um, and we're going to do a short presentation um, with the Putney Huddle um, on September 9th at 2.40 p.m. Um, at Putney Public Library at 55 Main Street. Um, and I believe that the Lieutenant Governor is also going to be there. Um, with who um, he also, David Zuckerman, he um, endorsed the youth vote, and I can actually read you the quote. He says, in a time when political cynicism is at an all-time high, it is great to see young citizens active and engaged in their communities. James, Rio, and others in the youth vote movement have been doing the hard work of knocking doors and gathering signatures in support of youth participation in their local town meeting. With the dedication, determination, and commitment of this group, I expect they will gather the 400 signatures required to put the youth vote amendment on the ballot, and I am hopeful local citizens will support it when they vote. Engaging youth in local decisions is a great way to instill a commitment to, to their community, bring in new ideas and energy, and to recognize the value they add to the region. Anyone has anything else to say? Right now, I would like to hear 
opinions. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Thanks. Oh, what's your uh, policy on uh, lunch? And uh, do you mean to <laughs> say that, that you thought 16 year olds were more stable and better had a better time in their lives to start voting than 18 year olds? Because 18 year olds have just started have just started college and they're they just moved out of their house. Well, some, some of them anyway, but they, yeah, well, and they have more of an ability to like move out of town and like a lot of the time. So stable as in physically stable in yeah. their environment. Yeah, and like they know more about the town that they're in a lot of times, and they feel more. They have parents who are voters, and they're. In high school, yeah, in the town's high school. school. Yeah, and also serving on the high school board um, is also a big thing because 16 year olds are in high school and they get affected by what happens in the high school. And I believe that they should be, we believe that they should be on the school board because they are the ones being affected by the changes that are made. Um, by the school board. I can't think of a better way to get 16 year olds involved and interested in the politics of, of their town than telling them they can vote on yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine what would be more of an incentive. More relevant. Yeah. Um, just a quick question about the urgency for the November ballot versus March, is that because that is higher voter turnout? Um, or is it more timing for once it passes and then when it becomes effective? Um, there are a lot of factors in that. There's the, there's the higher voter turnout. We want to see yeah, more people and what the whole town thinks of it, rather than just a small amount, and also because um, we've been building up to that time for a while, and um, we think that it might lose momentum if we wait until after November, because we've been getting a lot of publicity um, these past few weeks, and we think that having it sooner will get more people interested, and, we'll, and I think if we like have months and months of this, it might people might just get tired of it. <laughs> yeah. And last time it was on the ballot, it was in March, and that was the time that it did not pass. And if I was to make a guess as to why it didn't pass, is because there was um, a lack of understanding in the voters about what it was. I mean, if you were to open up your ballot and see 16 to vote without any other information, if you might choose not to not to vote on it, or you might decide that no, because you don't have information on it. So if now, because there's this momentum and there's the publicity about it, people are aware of what they're voting about. I think that they're going to be a lot more likely to be in support of it. Right, and you're doing a lot of outreach. And, um, I had a comment I just wanted to mention. I also uh, believe that the reason it didn't get accepted was it was lumped in with the pro-democracy amendments, which at that time we thought might be beneficial for it, but in all regards, it should probably be on its own so that the people that do have awareness can feel stronger about vote voting for it, and with more people your age out in the community, and then would allow people to see that you know, your age group was definitely capable of making decisions so hopefully having it on its own might be an even greater benefit than how we had it with the pro-democracy amendments, which was of course sideswiped by the select board. So just watch out from every direction. <laughs> um, also, um, I'm not sure, also as in response to your question um, about waiting for it to go on March, um, I'm not, I don't know much about um, how fast the um, how fast the legislature, the state legislature, makes decisions. But I've heard that um, 
they make them faster in the winter um, than if we waited until March, they probably wouldn't make the decision for, they probably would take another like six months or something to make the decision and to get back to the town in order for it to be actually put into action. Um, and I just realized um, the representative town meeting I said before that one youth vote, one, one youth member is allowed on representative town meeting is actually um, as many as are voted in and as many as would like to be. Um, <laughs> because also there have been in the past years 15 on 15 open seats on the representative town meeting because people aren't um, interested in the position or aren't trying to become town representatives. So, yeah. Um, uh, um, not how old are you? You're 16 now, but when will you be 17? In January. January, which means then you'll be 18 years old. Yes. So, <clears throat> March is really putting it right on the sidelines where you would end up being 18 and somebody who's 16 would have to take over. <laughs> yeah. So, well, see yeah, what that's, I mean? That's my, that's a, a little bit of a personal thing that I was kind of thinking about for yeah. right, a reason to get it on the November ballot because wanted. I want to be able to vote <laughs> at 18. <All> right. <laughs> but it's bigger than that. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, exactly. you're, you're, you're thinking about, you said us. Yeah. So you're talking about all. You have this thing about your arms and mm -hmm. including it all. So yeah. that's good. Cool. November. November. Hopefully. Got my vote. Um, Ms. Dimes, did I say that right? Yes. Um, what do you? What issues do you think youth 16 and 17 want to vote about? Won't they be bored with most things on the agenda? You know, the sewer district, the, the street light budget. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not positive. I think I can only speak for myself for that thing, but it really depends on, on what's there, I think. Um, for example, if I was able to vote when there was the plastic bag ban in Brattleboro, I think I would definitely want to vote for that because I know that plastic bags are very harmful to the environment. Um, and definitely also, I think maybe the most interesting thing to you will be the school boards because um, I know so many people um, are very unhappy with the, um, with the way that the school treats the kids and just with the state that schools are in that they go to. And um, I think it's important also to have it on the um, um, elementary school board too because um, a lot of people I know have younger siblings who are also not happy with the way that their schools are. Um, and there aren't any young people on the school boards at the moment. There's just, there are no, probably no one under 40. Um, so, yeah. There's like a comment about the school board, the majority of it is men and they are all white people. Yeah. There's, <laughs> so, there's no like, white people of color yeah. on the school board for the high school. And the majority of them are white. I mean, yeah. the majority of them are men. Yeah. What um, issues do you plan to bring to the ballot as a member of your organization? I'm not planning on bringing anything to the ballot right now. Except the youth vote. Yeah, other than the youth vote. 
Not until she can vote on the matter. <laughs> Maybe a skate park wouldn't have taken so long if we had had some young people voting on some of those issues. Maybe. Um, I think... I was thinking about this before how the town spends a lot of money um, on things that don't even need repairs or anything. Like, I, there's this one very small road that I bike on go on my way to school, and I think they've paved that like three times in the last five years. <laughs> And it hasn't even, and it's been fine every single time. There's just like one tiny pothole or something, maybe on the court, on like way on the edge or something next to someone's driveway. And then they have to pave the whole entire road. Um, whereas in other places, the roads have been filled with potholes for years and years. And they haven't even tried to fix it at all. Um, I'm just different. There's a lot of things I, d I think I'll definitely try to get more, once this hopefully passes, I'll definitely try to get more involved in town issues because I'm thinking a lot about, I've been thinking a lot recently about national issues and global issues, but I haven't really before been involved in local issues, which I think this will help me get involved in that more. One good local issue will go right out throughout. If you say something big, it all it'll it'll go from town to town, from yeah. country to country. And I think right now it's really like immediate, <coughs> like our generation and our town and stuff. But like, hopefully, once we can get like this ball rolling, like more towns and more areas, yeah. and like exactly, like we'll be taught about actually voting and like and we'll have a amendment to their charter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely hoping that this will inspire some youth around in different places to start this in their town. I know that there, um, there are some there are some other towns around the United States that are also trying to do this. There's um, a website called Vote 16 USA and um, it shows all the different towns that are working on different things for 16 year olds a lot of them are um, some of them are just getting them on the school board some of them are just getting them to vote um, but i definitely hope that this passing will help other places too because they can see that this is possible serve as a, you know, but your work has laid the foundation for other communities, hopefully. It's also just interesting when people, like, when we hear, like, oh, well, when I was 16, like, I wasn't as smart, yeah. like, as smart, smart enough to do that, and, like, you guys are also young and, like, reckless, but, like, when they say that, there's no follow-up of, like, so this is what we'll do to change that, or, yeah. like, or maybe you are smart enough, like, and it's kind of just like, well, if you're judging us and trying to make a change in the community of like schools teaching how to how to be human yeah. and go. The well, reckless, it still comes down to the vote. I also think that like, as Rio mentioned, that if you care if you care to vote, you're gonna educate yourself in yeah. order to make yeah. a smart decision. And if you are reckless and don't really care and aren't really interested in being part of the political process, then you're just going to remove yourself from even being a part of, of the voting process. So, right, it's a self-selecting group. Yeah, and there's also the fact that one person voting rec recklessly isn't really, isn't going to change the whole entire thing. Like, it's just one person maybe not knowing um, what the issue is that they're voting on. And I know 
um, that a lot of people, a lot of people, um, when I was at the polls, when I when I was at the elections, primary elections, um, this two Tuesdays ago, collecting signatures, um, a lot of adults came in. They were like, "Tell me who to vote for. I don't know anyone who's on this." And I was like, um, uh, "No." <laughs> You have no idea about anyone who's on this on this ballot. How, how are you supposed to tell me that I shouldn't vote because I might not know people on the ballot? So I don't know. It's just and yeah, it's just that a lot of people um, immediately think of these responses to the youth vote that are easily applicable to everyone else who already is voting. I would just say that it's easy to get discouraged about the state of our democracy today. And when I see and hear you and all the people who are working with you and support the young people who are working with you, it, it lets me know that there is hope for our democracy and that we can get out of this. So thank you so much. Thank you. It is like it's our future, so like the yeah. changes that are being made now are going to affect like us. Definitely. Yeah. Older. Definitely. Yeah. Putting the last screws in my coffin will be crazy. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Um, okay, well, I think that concludes it. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Rio. Good job. Thank you. <laughs>